Lord, come quickly to me. Hear me when I call you. May my prayers be set before you like incense. May the lifting up of my hands be like the evening sacrifice. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil. So I take part in wicked deeds, along with those who are evildoers. Do not let me eat their delicacies. Let a righteous man strike me, that is kindness. Let him rebuke me, that is oil on my head. My head will not refuse it, for my prayer will still be against the deeds of evildoers. Their rulers will be thrown down from the cliffs, and the wicked will learn that my words were well spoken. They will say, as one plows and breaks up the earth, so our bones have been scattered at the mouth of the grave. But my eyes are fixed on you, Sovereign Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not give me over to death. Keep me safe from the traps set by evildoers, from the snares they have laid for me. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I pass by in safety. Amen. Um, you guys may be seated. So this is a psalm of David, and from the very first few lines, uh, you can see that the psalm is like a prayer where David is asking God to work in him. Uh, verse 1, uh, you guys can read along. It says, um, I call to you, Lord, come quickly. And verse 2 uh, says, may my prayers be set before you like incense. And David is lifting his hands and offering his praise as the evening sacrifice. Now, the first note that I would like to make from Psalm 141 is that David is a man with great spiritual insight. Um, David has the confidence to call upon the Lord and tell the Lord to come quickly. You know, he didn't need a priest. He didn't need to be in the sanctuary to call on God. But he offered his hands as a sacrifice and act of worship to the Lord. And the Lord accepted that worship. Uh, David's hands were empty, so he didn't come with a goat, he didn't come with a sheep, or anything to offer God. But he came. In this case, David's heart was focused on his love for God and his worship. And this was his worship that he came with God with. So this morning, uh, as we're here to worship uh, the Lord, I just want to encourage you guys to let your worship come from the Lord. You know, if it is like raising your hand, I noticed when we were worshiping, many of us were raising our hand. If that worship is coming from the heart, our God is ready to receive that worship. Amen. When we are saying a hallelujah, amen, just like we just did, you know, that's coming from the heart. So when we are worshiping, let that worship come from the heart and our God is going to accept that worship and he's going to delight in it. So let's worship with the love that we have for God and as David offered his sacrifice. Um, the second point that I wanted to make is that David was a man of godly character. Uh, verse 3 reads, Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door doors of my lip. Verse 4 says, Do not let my heart be drawn to what is evil, so that I take part in wicked deeds. So we all know David as a great Bible leader. And um, he faced many hardships, you know, as a shepherd boy. He faced many hardships with his brothers, with Saul. He faced many hardships with his own people, and he had many enemies. So after all of this, David could have easily said something harsh or could have responded back in an ungodly way. But the Bible says that David is a man after his own heart. He understood the great potential of his mouth and how it could be used for evil. And that's why um, he asked God to set a guard over his mouth. So in James 3, 7 to 10, the Bible says, All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human beings can tame the tongue. And he explains why. He says that it is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. Um, so with the tongue, we praise the Lord, our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings we have, who have been made in the likeness of God. And out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. So as Christians and as born-again believers, uh, we need to be careful about what comes from our mouth. Many times we go through difficult situations where someone is against us and they may be saying lies or maybe they might be putting us down. And it's in those times when it's very easy to respond in the same way that they have 
shown us or said some words that are equally as destructive. But the psalm is saying that when we respond in that same way, it means that we're partaking in the same evil and wickedness. So as Christians, we need to desire a righteous life, a life that doesn't engage with the patterns of this world and respond to the evil as the world does, responds. Instead, in the tough times, we can call on God and ask Him to set a guard over our mouths. We can ask Him to set a guard over our hearts and give us the strength to withstand the evil. David had a great uh, godly character. And one point that I just wanted to bring here is that the Christian life is built on character and character is built on decisions that we make. So David made many wise decisions and we can see that um, reflected in his own life. So in the same way, we can build our character in this life by turning to God in all things and asking God to work in us. And the last point I wanted to focus on was that David was ready to receive correction from the Lord. Up until this point, from verses 1 to 4, we can see that David is asking God to work in himself and help him to reject evil. But in verse 5, David says, Let a righteous man strike me, that is kindness. Let him rebuke me, that is oil on my head, and my head will not refuse it. So David has seen many times how the people of Israel, that they had hard hearts and were turning away from God. They didn't listen to the people God sent, and David saw how God often used an enemy to soften their hearts and to chastise his people. He even saw how Saul didn't listen to the correction from God, and Saul had to learn the hard way. So here David is accepting the correction of a righteous man over the correction of the enemy. He's asking God, like he's asking God, hey God, um, if you need to correct me, come and send a righteous man. Uh, so a correction from a righteous man is kindness, and it's like oil on the head. It's a blessing. But the correction from the enemy leads to disappointment. David ends uh, the verse with, For my prayers will still be against the deeds of evildoers. And verse 6 and verse 7, I'll read it quickly. Uh, Their rulers will be thrown down from the cliffs, and the wicked will learn from the wor- from my words that my words were well spoken. And verse 7 says, They will say, As one plows and breaks up the earth, so our bones have been scattered at the mouth of the grave. And finally, I just wanted to focus on verse 8 to 10, uh, where David ends his prayer by putting his faith and trust in the Lord. As, um, as I read, as I read, uh, you guys can read along with me and put your trust in the Lord too. Um, so verse 8 to 9 and 10. But my eyes are fixed on you, Sovereign Lord. In you I take refuge. Do not give me over to death. Keep me safe from the trap set by evildoers, from the snares they have laid for me. Let the wicked fall into their own net while I pass by in safety. Amen. This morning, um, we take refuge in the Lord as David did. Um, He is our protector. He is our shield. He will not let our feet fall into the traps and snares of the enemy. Um, We can trust that our God is in control and that he will be our safety. So let's trust in the Lord and just let him lead our lives. May the Lord bless you with these words. Amen.